already know where the text is. We're still in Jeremiah. And this is the verse of scripture that worked me all week until I yielded and submitted to it. Jeremiah chapter 20. One verse. Verse 9. Somebody else should have been in the woodshed of the Lord because of this verse other than that. Amen. Jeremiah 20 and 9. If you haven't seen, man. Amen. The King James Version of this most confrontational verse of scripture says this then that's the reason I read for you what I did this morning so you would know how we got here where it says then then I Jeremiah the prophet said I Jeremiah the prophet will not make mention of him him being Elohim El Shaddai Jehovah, yeah. Yahweh. Yes. I will not make mention of him. As a matter of fact, yeah. nor speak any more in his name. Yes, that would be a crucial text yes. if a certain word did yeah. not appear in your right. life. And the word says, but. But, but. Somebody ought to thank God Amen. for the word, but. Amen. But his word, yeah. his, word. his word was in mine heart uh -huh. oh, yeah. as a burning fire yeah. shut up in my, in my heart. Yeah. And I was weary oh, yeah. with forbearing. Uh -huh. I was weary yeah, yeah, yeah. with forbearing. Yeah. What you say, Jeremiah? One more time so I'm clear. <laughs> he said, I was weary, weary. with forbearing, yeah, yeah. and I could not could stay. Not stay. No. Amen. I, I, I want to speak to this thought this morning. I am, I am compelled, compelled to continue. I gave you to say that I am compelled to continue. Delphine, I mean, Delphine, Delphina, look at your sister. Sister, look at your sister. With the stuff that's going on, I want y'all to tell each other, I am compelled to continue. Somebody say amen. amen. There's some stuff going on that the enemy wants you to quit, but you got to make a definitive declaration and say, I am compelled to continue. Now, you might not finish as you believe it, but you need to continue as God has described. Somebody say amen. God our Father, the grass wither, the flower fade. But this word is everlasting, which means it was made to continue. Yes. And we thank you. Thank you Lord. Let us not leave the way we came. Yes. We ask this in Jesus' name and for our sake. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, 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 am I am compelled, compelled to continue. To continue. Yes. Your grandson made that declaration before I even made the announcement. He got hurt, but on Saturday, he woke up and said, I am compelled. I ain't got no help up in here today. Y'all going to make it hard for me to go on vacation, but I was hoping y'all would give me some fuel to run with and we get out of here. But, 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 but whether you do or not, I am compelled to continue. You can sit there and not say anything, but as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. I'm compelled. I don't have a choice in this matter. 
There should be some things in the Christian's life that you don't have a choice about. Uh, we have grown up so much that we have outgrown the Bible. Y'all mad at me up in here. That, that we think us can do what us want to. But, but I'm glad that Paul warns Timothy that there's a time coming when they will not be able to handle sound doctrine. They will turn themselves to fables having teachers and itching ears. But, but, but every once in a while, you need to put ten toes down, stand not on business, but on the Bible, and say, I am compelled to continue. This thing got hard for Brother Jeremiah. It wasn't an easy move for him. Uh, Jeremiah said, don't you remember? The first thing I want you not to forget, my calling was a struggle. Yes, sir. I, I, okay, read it for me, because y'all looking at me like I'm making up stuff. I am going through the woods, but I, I'm not making up stuff. In this Bible, in chapter 1 and verse 4, it says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, this is Jeremiah speaking, saying, before I formed thee in the oh, belly, yes, I knew thee. I knew, yeah. And before thy camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee yes, and I ordained yes, thee yes, for the work that I was going to give. Yes, I, 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 I want you to understand that if you're going to live this thing called life, you're not going to be able to make it without some struggle. Amen. 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 While Jeremiah wanted to remain faithful to his call. His efforts appeared to come a little sharp. After 40 years of ministry, he fails to secure one convert. Yeah. Jeremiah, help me right there. At least in the 17 years I've been here, I've seen a couple. Somebody can say amen. And all of them didn't join the church, but I've seen conversion from folk in the church. Are, are, are you here? I, I've seen folk make some monumental moves in spiritual development in the church. I, uh, you ought to say amen for yourself right there. That's a good place for you to say amen. That I've grown up some up in here. I'm not the little monk that showed up always wanting to have my way. I've learned how to be a better steward of the Lord being up in the church. Uh, Jeremiah, uh, it's hard for him to understand when it looks like every seed you planted, the birds ate it. Oh. Hard for Brother Jeremiah when it looked like every seed he planted fell on stony rocks. Yeah. I'm not a prophet, but I've been called to warn some rebellious people of the judgment that's on the way. I'm sure we have all experienced seasons in our life when we can relate to Jeremiah's fear. I, I pray for my daughter because I know right now with all of that intellect you have about property management mm -hmm. and you're wondering about the property that you should yeah. and how to manage it. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, somebody ought to be honest up in church. Yeah. Every, once in a, every once in a while I come to church with some doubts. Yeah. See, y'all ain't going to get delivered till you can be honest. Yeah. Every once in a while I come to church wondering, God, are you still on the throne? Amen. Jeremiah is one to God. Are you still there? Yes. I've been praying and I, I ain't got no results. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm about myself up yes, in here. Man. All your children doing well. Yes. Everybody in the house on time. Every yes. bill paid. Yes. I still have some unanswered prayer. Yes. I still have some places that God ain't met me at yet. Yes. The calling to respond is sometimes a struggle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What makes it a struggle? Because the enemy has a one tool that he beats the church up with frequently. And it's called discouragement. Yeah. We all must learn to deal <clears throat> with our personal discouragement. Right. Right. Struggles, disappointment, yeah. despair, disillusion. I know the old saying says when Life deals you lemons, yes. make lemonade, but somebody know you still need water and sugar. Oh, yes. 
Whoever said that they should have gave me everything, they said when life gives you living. Well, where's the water? And where's the sugar? Sometimes I can't find no sugar because I'm in the bitter place of life. Somebody ought to help me up in here. Uh, I have to realize that every day is not Christmas. And every night's not New Year's Eve. But, 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 but I, I want you to understand, I found out we must learn to handle life on life's terms. Yeah. Even if life turns against us. Somebody didn't know getting old would be so hard. Yeah. I, I didn't know I'd have all these aches and pains. Oh, yes. I hear you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Every time I raise my hand, I'm not praising. Sometimes I'm surrendering. Y'all play too much up in here. I, I, I'm at a place in life that I have to ask my back, can I get out of bed? Yeah. I, I, I'm serious. I'm not trying to be cute up in here. I had to roll. Viv, you don't understand what I'm saying. You still spy, Viv, and join. But I had to roll out of bed. And God taught me a lesson. He said, that's how I get you on your knees. Y'all play too much right there. He said, if you can stand up, you get up. But if I put you down, you got to wait till I pick you up. You can know, hear me so. Every once in a while, there's going to come a time you'll realize that God knows how to get your attention. Even, even when life has seemingly turned against you. Even in my Christian life, I have some disappointments. Yeah, right. In society, I have some societal disappointments. Yes, in my home, I have some home yes, disappointments. Yes, oh, I know DeAndre and Eli-Andre and Anthony might be watching and Danielle, but in my children, yes, sometimes yes, I have some yes, children yes, that have disappointments. Sometimes they look up and say, I have a father who have disappointed me. Y'all act like y'all holier than me up in here. Uh, in our families, we can have some familia disappointment. Huh? In our marriages, I love you, sweetie. We can have some marital disappointments. Is anybody here with me? Amen. On our jobs. Even though they provide us a way to pay bills, we can have employment disappointments. Wanting a promotion and watching the one you train hop over you to get what you was waiting on. It ain't never happened, you know. Well, well, well here's one more, and I, I, I might stop. In church, you can have some church disappointment. This is the last one. In myself, I have some self disappointment. And, and, and watch this, I've been working feverishly to remove the opportunity for other people to disappoint me. I've been working on that, especially the last 17 years. Because I've had many folk tell me they were going to do this and they would do that. And when time came, they weren't even around. So, so, so I, I, I made a conscious decision with my intelligent self uh -huh. that I was going to stop people from being able to disappoint. Yes, sir. I said, especially down at 901, I'm not going to let them disappoint me no more. And then the Lord said, wait a minute. Can you come in the room with me? He said, I got a room full of disappointments with your name on it. He said, I can remove them if you remove yours. Wow. See, we remember when folk disappoint us. But what I was trying to say, Sister Nadia Johnson, yesterday, how many times written in the annals of heaven is there 
a time that I disappointed the opportunity because I can't disappoint God. He gave me an opportunity. I disappointed it, but he already knew I wasn't going to do it. See, you can't disappoint God because he's omniscient, which means he knows everything. That means he gave you an opportunity to show you you wasn't going to do right. Can I be honest and tell you I learned to put expectations back on you. I still depend on you. I still have an appointment in which your name is written on it. And my prayer is that you'll meet the appointment. Because here in Jeremiah, first of all, Jeremiah is a man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, he is. So, see, see, we have to remember that the folk we deal with, they are man. Yes, sir. They are man, man, or woman. Yes, sir. And they are prone to make mistakes. Huh? And, and so, therefore, even you are prone. Don't put yourself in a position that you can't even forgive you. I got folk I deal with that they still mad at themselves. God has forgiven you. Why don't you forgive you? Huh? Yeah, God forgave you. That's the reason he put the word for in there. It was there before you needed it. That's why he said, Jeremiah, I knew who you was. Before you entered the womb of your mother. Yeah. Jeremiah is a man that is appointed by God. Yeah. He is a man anointed by God. Yeah. He is a man assigned by God. Yeah. And he is disappointed. Oh my God. And he is discouraged. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to help somebody. Yeah. Before you throw in the time. Not, not only is he ready but he has submitted a letter of resignation to God. He has done what I call the step down. Huh? Anytime you give up the assignment God gave you, you do what I call the step down. You will get up and say it one more time and somebody will, you do what I call the step down. Anytime you stop going up for God, you step down. Our job is to step up. Amen. And too often we're ready to step down. Yeah. Yeah. Supposed to be committed to something. Yeah. Yeah. Supposed to be committed to someone. And all of a sudden, in your adultism, with your all-knowing self, you want to step down. Yeah. Jesus. Huh. Lest we judge Jeremiah too harshly, I dare to suggest on this morning rushing to afternoon that there is someone here today that used to. You used to. Which means you don't anymore, but you used to. You used to study your Bible. You used to be faithful to the Lord's church. Y'all mad at me yeah, up in yeah. here. You used to show up early. You used to stay late. You used to. But you have made the decision to step down. Used to be a good friend. But they didn't do what you wanted to. I sit down until y'all say amen. If we're going to change this, we have to understand that it is a struggle, the work God has called you to. If you're going to be a husband, J.C. Pumpkin, that's his nickname, if y'all want to know. Pumpkin. If you're going to be a husband, Pumpkin, you can't step down when Bucket don't act right. It was all right when I called his nickname. 
Her whole face changed when I called her. The assignments God has given us, they're not going to be easy. But he has placed your DNA on it. Nobody can activate the things God gave for me to do but me. So if we're going to get here, yeah, Jeremiah is a preacher. He's a prophet. And he, he even had passion. Jeremiah had so much passion, they called him the weeping prophet. Yes, Jeremiah's prophet, preacher, passion causes him pain. Yes, See, anything you really care about, you got to be willing to go through some pain yes, for. Yes, we want it to come easy. Relationships aren't easy because you in them. We think it's the other person. The relationship for Sister Hodge is hard because I'm in it. Amen. Ouch. He had a great desire to do well for God. Yet we find him not only quitting, but saying, I won't even utter the name of the Lord anymore. I've seen people not just step down, but they walked away. And he says, anybody who left, they were around us, but they weren't with us. Y'all mad at me right now. You can say hallelujah because you here. You taking responsibility for your son. Somebody going to step up this week while I'm gone. And the lesson going to go on anyway. It ain't about me. Well, I, I'm going to jump away from this lesson. I'm a, I, I just want to talk to you. Can I put this up? Can we just have a family talk? Watch this. It ain't about me. This thing is not about me. Have you ever noticed when there's a funeral at the church, how the church feels? Oh, yes. Choir stand feels up. And I ask myself, why do all these people come to funerals? And it's because they come to honor the one that's dead. I wonder why on Sunday, I'm getting out of here, that the church don't fill up to honor the one that died. Y'all miss me already. I, I wish that they understood that Sunday morning is a good day to honor the one that died. Y'all play too much. I'm going home. I, I got a plane to get on. I realize that his calling was a struggle. I'm getting out of here. The congregation is stubborn. His course is strenuous. But if he could only realize that it's not about him, but they come to the funeral for the one who has died. I'm glad that I know that Adam died. Yeah. Noah died. Abraham, God. Isaac, God. Jacob, God. Joshua, God. Moses, God. David, God. Solomon, God. Isaiah, God. Jeremiah, God. Ezekiel, God. Daniel, God. Hosea, God. Joel, God. Amos, God. help me get out of here, Obadiah. Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, and one Friday, Jesus died. He died. He died because his calling was a struggle when nobody and nothing could redeem man. He called himself a wrapped up in an earthly body walked through 40 and two 
the robes of Sarah. Do you know Jesus? I'm glad that I know Jesus because when I gave you the tag, come on choir, I'm really out of here. And I said, I am compelled to continue. Some of y'all stuck your little chest out, shook your weave a little bit, popped your lips up at me, and you thought I was talking about you. There was a song Deacon Hart and I used to like. It said, you are so vain. You probably think this song is about you, don't you? Well, you, you're so vain. You probably think this sermon is about you, don't you? This sermon is about he who laid yes, dead, sir. Yes, sir. but didn't stay dead. Yes, when I say I am, I go back to Exodus, yes. the third chapter and the 13th verse. Yes. And Moses said unto God, yes. Behold, when I come to the children of Israel, yes. and shall say unto them, that the God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And somebody, you've been sick and you wanted to know his name. Somebody, your money that got funny and your change got strange and you want to know what is his name. Well, somebody, you got sorrow and tears, weeping and despair. And you say, what is preacher his name? Verse 14 said, and God said unto his servant, tell them I am that I am. And he said, thus shall you say to the children of Israel that I am have sent you. Well, let me jump to the New Testament. Come here, John, because folk want to know about my Jesus. That's why church is not exciting anymore, because they don't know my Jesus. Well, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. He says, I am the light of the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. You still don't get it. He said, I am the door, and if by me any man enter, he shall be saved, and he shall go in and come out and find pastor. I'm glad he didn't stop there, because in the pasture, you're only going to find sheep, because he says, I am the door by which the sheep enter into the sheepfold. Ain't you glad about it? Well, he said, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. You don't hear me? He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, he shall live. Every Sunday, I come to church looking for dead folk that can rise up. If you know that God can make a way for you, why don't you rise up and tell God thank you. I'm glad that once I was dead, but God, he stretched out, he laid out his hand for me. I'm glad that he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. I'm out of here. He said, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringing forth much fruit. I'm glad that I am. I've gone. I'm on the way to Cleveland. I'll see my family soon. But if I don't make it to Cleveland, don't worry about me, because I will fly away. One last 
morning you'll look for me and I'll be gone. Well, where you going? I, I'm going back at 71st, because that's where Jesus demonstrates that I am compelled to continue. When it got hard for Jesus, when his best of the best fell asleep on him, help yourself, preacher. I think I will. When the deacons don't want a deacon and the choir don't want to sing, when the ushers don't want a usher, he said, remember, I took Peter, James, and John. And when I went to pray for them, they fell asleep on me. So sleep on at church if you want to. But as for me, uh, I'm going to stay awake. Uh, I'm going to stay on my post. Uh, I won't come down. I'm going to wait till I hear the master say, well done. My good and faithful servant, Jesus is in Gethsemane. He's praying. The Bible says uh, the sweat dropped off of him, piercing like blood. Jesus, uh, what are you doing? He's praying. And he said, Father, this is a bitter cup. But every once in a while, the work you assigned to do is going to be bitter. But if you press your way through, if you can just get out of the way and I stands for me but E stands for the eternal one. I'm glad that I can be bitter today but better today. I thank God the principles Jesus demonstrate. He says I am compelled to continue. One word church moves Jesus to continue and he says Nevertheless, I need some nevertheless saints. You might be tired. You might be sick. You might be ready to step down. Give me your resignation. But I dare you to tell God, if you need somebody, I may not can run as fast as I did. Can't talk as long. But nevertheless, nevertheless, Lord, if you need somebody, here am I. I am compelled to continue because I read in Revelations the last I am. I gave you seven and this makes eight. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. And then he just said, Amen. I dare you to say, Amen. I am compelled to continue. I dare you to say, I am. I am compelled to keep on keeping on. I'm going to stick with them until she graduates from college. I'm going to hold up the bloodstained banner. I'm going to protect her from every predator that comes toward her. I am compelled to continue. I might have made a mistake in the past, but thank God for a new day and a new opportunity. Anybody here want to tell God, I am. compelled to continue. Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I finished. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish my course. How you going to do it, Hodge? I will keep the faith. Because I know a man. I know a man who walks with me, who talks with me, who tells me that I am his very